So I believe that Bitcoin's gonna go to $1 million, and today we're gonna talk about how the mainstream news is supporting this. Now, if you believe in cryptocurrency, and if you believe in the future of Bitcoin, then I'm gonna encourage you to subscribe to my channel. My channel, first and foremost, I believe in blockchain technology, and its number one use case as a cryptocurrency. Currently, right now, Bitcoin is the market leader. Secondary to my channel, I believe in earning passive Bitcoin or passive cryptocurrency that you can use to buy more Bitcoin. So my channel, I oftentimes cover Bitcoin, Bitcoin news, what's happening in Bitcoin, everything about Bitcoin, as well as passive income strategies and altcoins that allow us to be able to earn passive income. True blockchain strategies that allow us to earn passive Bitcoin. None of the whole scammy, you know, go here today, gone tomorrow type thing. So first of all, I want to talk about right here, this video is going to be a part of my series, Bitcoin to $1 million. I have an entire playlist on my channel talking about Bitcoin going to $1 million. And I believe that Bitcoin will go to $1 million. And the, and the reason I'm talking about this today, the reason I'm making this video is because this is a news story, uh, a current news story today. And this news story literally um, helps corroborate what I've been talking about on my channel. And the thing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is I believe that the number one use case for cryptocurrency is as a currency, as a world currency. And I believe that Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin for that fundamental reason. He or she or they or whoever Satoshi Nakamoto is understood that inflation was occurring. And this is something that I talk about on my playlist uh, Bitcoin will reach $1 million. You can watch this on my channel. But it, it, one of the things that I talk about is is wh why Bitcoin is going to reach $1 million. And I mean $1 million in today's buying power right now. The reason that I fundamentally believe that this will occur is because I don't believe that our nation or our world can escape what's happening right now in our current economic system. And I think that the only solution is going to be a blockchain currency. And I'm going to talk about this news story. If you once you understand that, then you you'll see news stories over and over that will corroborate that use case and the potential that we currently have. And I'm going to show you a news story right now that does not talk about Bitcoin. But if you understand the news story, then you're going to understand. If you understand the news story and you understand Bitcoin and the use case of Bitcoin and how that works with the U.S. debt then you're, you're going to see that it just makes sense. Like that, this is clearly where we're headed. And one of the reasons that I talk about this uh, on my channel is because I think that the demographic of people that are most interested in cryptocurrency right now are 35 and below. The challenge with that demographic is that as far as they can tell, the current economic system works because they haven't lived long enough to watch the buying power of their dollar shrink. You know, 40, 50 years ago, a dollar would buy so much more than it would today. And most people think a candy bar cost 25 cents, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And the reason it costs 25 cents is just because everything gets more expensive. But they don't understand why everything's getting more expensive. And it's because inflation. And this is the number one thing that cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency prevents, is it prevents inflation. In fact, cryptocurrency is the ops. The U.S. dollar is inflationary, meaning that more are always being printed to cover our debts because our U.S. government can't cover our debts, which means that just by you holding a thousand dollars or 10,000 or a hundred thousand U.S. dollars in your bank account, you're literally losing the buying power of that money, meaning a hundred thousand dollars this year will not buy what it, what a hundred thousand dollars will buy this year. It will probably not be able to buy the same thing next year or the next year because the value or the buying power of your dollar continues to drop. Where long term, Bitcoin is deflationary. The supply of Bitcoin is capped at 21 million, but people lose their Bitcoin all the time or they lose access to their private key. That means that the supply of Bitcoin, some have estimated that the max supply currently would only be about 17 million because 5 million or so have already been lost. 4 million, 5 million or so have already been lost. Let's take a look at this news story. Again, this is a news story from today. U.S. Treasury, and I'm going to commentate through here just to make some connections to Bitcoin. U.S. Treasury, wait a minute, let me just back up. If you want to see this full, if you want to have a full understanding of what I'm talking about, because this video is going to be a lot shorter, come and watch this playlist. Here, I, I build the case why Bitcoin will reach $1 million. Here, I talk about one of the ways that I think that it could get to $1 million, and that's through mass adoption with other countries leading the way first, and then 
um, like the U.S. catching up on board. Like in this case, there's talk of Russia buying Bitcoin with their central bank. If they did that, I believe that other countries would follow suit to prevent a potential blockchain currency power grab. And then here I cover a news story again that talks about the debt and what's going on. And here is a news story from today that's a little bit different. And I'm going to put this on the playlist as well. So by the way, go up in the card and, uh, and I'll put this playlist up in the card so you'll be able to watch the entire playlist. And if you believe what I believe about cryptocurrency and you believe that Bitcoin is the future, please subscribe to my channel because this is what I'm all about. It's what I'm talking about. I believe that we're in the early stages of the cryptocurrency revolution. Here we go. U.S. Treasury set to borrow $1 trillion for a second year to finance the debt. Now, I want you to deconstruct this headline because it's so easy to read that and not understand it. Let's talk about this for a moment. Most people can have no gravity because when you start talking about economic numbers, they're just so big that most people don't pay attention to it. One trillion dollars, ladies and gentlemen, is equal to one thousand million. Think about that. One thousand million for a second year, meaning this is the second time in a row this has occurred, that they've needed to borrow one thousand million dollars. So we've got two thousand million. OK, that's two trillion. That's an insane number just in two years. To finance the debt, to finance the debt, that means that's how we can't afford it. We can't afford what our government is already spending. And I, I go into much more in-depth right here on this video talking about that. When I start talking about um, the debt, the, um, let's see, oh, it's not going to come up. Um, they're going to play an ad. But I start talking about the U.S. debt clock and, and I start talking about how we're going in debt at a rate of about $45,000 per second per second. And once you understand the, the economics of that, and you, if you understand the, the documentary, The Money is Debt, which I reference, then it starts to make a lot more sense. The U.S. Treasury Department is set to maintain elevated sales of long-term debt to finance the government's widening budget deficits, with a new issu issuance projected to top $1 trillion for a second straight years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not financial advice, but if you understand this, then you understand why Bitcoin is poised to go up over the next coming years. I mean, and, and potentially up a lot. I mean, it, it's going to be laughable when people come back and look at this video, in my opinion. Again, this isn't financial advice. I'll, you'll probably lose money if you follow my financial advice, so don't follow my financial advice. But my opinion is that this is going to be laughable a few years from now when people come back and they're like, what, Bitcoin was $3,000? And, and, you know, all of a sudden the lows are going to be like 30000 or Bitcoin's going to hit 300000 And I know that may sound crazy. How can Bitcoin hit 300000 Well, I think it's going to hit a million or more. And my playlist talks about that. But one of the reasons is because it has to. There's no way out of the current debt cycle. Listen, many strategists at primary dealer firms predict that Wednesday's quarterly refunding announcement will set the Treasury maintain note and bond sales at a record high levels. They have boosted them in recent months. The total amount of three, 10, and 30 years securities to be offered at next week's refunding auctions is seen by most at $84 billion. While, that one billion, while that's one billion more than the total of these maturities three months ago, that's only because the size of the three-year sale was already nudged higher in December. A heightened supply of treasury securities followed tax cuts and government spending increases implemented under the current administration. That's darkening a fiscal outlook already made worrisome by rising entitlement programs, expenses, and higher cost to service America's nearly $16 trillion in debt. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet runoff is also adding to supply, forcing Secretary, Treasury Secretary Stephen Munchen to tap the public for more funding. Okay, this is, by the way, U.S. Treasury has already boosted auctions issuance to unprecedented highs. So check, take a look. This is from the 90s. You can you can see here how it goes up and down, but notice it never comes down and stays down. Um, basically, if you look at like right up in here, it, it, those of you that are old enough can remember. I think this is around when Newt Gingrich and all those got Republicans. The, anytime the Republicans aren't in power, they're like fiscal conservatives. They're like fiscal hawks. They want to you know so, uh, spending. You know they got to rein in the spending. Of course, Trump's in power, and you won't even hear them talk about that at all. Uh, I'm telling you, the Republican and Democratic Party, it's a big dog and pony show. Ultimately, they're headed the same place. They're just getting there in a different way, but especially when it comes to our nation's debt. But so this happened. And then in the 2000s, you know, George Bush Jr., the spending went through the roof. Of course, the Republicans said that was because we had a war. OK, great. Uh, but then 
here we go again. I think this was uh, Obama's era. And then the Republicans highlighted how horrible Obama did um, while ignoring this. But, you know, and then here we are again. And here's Trump. And he's just getting started. Um, so it doesn't, this is a Republican, this is not a Republican or Democrat issue. Anytime that you hear the Repu one of the parties talking about spending, you need to know that both of them are spending like crazy. And they're not going to stop because to stop spending means that you would have to cut Medicare, Medicaid, uh, education funds, military funds, and that makes you unpopular as a as a politician. So unfortunately, we get the government that we deserve and that we vote for. And unfortunately, we consistently vote for governments that are getting us deeper and deeper and deeper in debt, and no one's really, really being held accountable for it. Let's keep going. We've seen deficits continue to blow out the terms, blow out, said Brian Edmonds, head of interest rates trading at Cantor Fitzgerald in New York. We're going to see more and more supply, meaning we're going to see more money printed. Cantor, along with dealers include, including Citigroup, TD Securities, Deutsche Bank, uh, Wells Fargo Security sees the Treasury keeping auction size unchanged for normal coupon bearing debt. A few dealers, including Nate West Markets, UBS Securities, expect the Treasury to notch coupon bearing debt sales slightly higher again. Among these outliers are strategists at UBS Securities Incorporated who predict three, 10, and 30 year refunding issues will each be increased by $1 billion over the coming three month period. After focusing last year on increasing nominal debt, prior guidance from the Treasury has dealers saying more. Say more detail is likely in the coming months on plans to boost auction sizes for Treasury inflation protected securities or tips. That's on top of the new five year October tips that's already been slated for the calendar year. So, again, it's just spending, spending, spending. Such changes may result in additional net tips insurance of $26 billion this year, or according to a note from Zachary Griffins, a strategist at Wells Fargo Securities, slated for Treasury to focus on ramping up tips. So, the, notice how. They just keep spending more. They keep auctioning off more treasuries. And if you don't understand, treasuries is debt. So people are ba basically buying treasuries and they get the treasuries paid back plus interest. The largest purchaser of the treasuries, by the way, are other countries. The treasury's uh, total net new insurance is 200, in 2018 amounted to $1.34 trillion, more than double the 2017 level of $550 billion. Again, it's doubled. Please understand how, the magnitude of that. It's doubled. In 2019, it will, will be $1.4 trillion with $1.1 trillion from more coupon debt, bearing debt, and the rest in bills according to forecasts from Deutsche Bank. Annual new insurance will range from $1.2 trillion to $1.4 billion over the next four years, he says. So bear with me. I've got something to show you. Because people are like, how can this keep happening? How can this keep happening? I'm going to show you here in a moment. The physical 2018 U.S. debt gap hit a six-year high of $780 billion, and the Congressional Budget Office forecast it will reach $973 billion in 2019 and top $1 trillion, $1 trillion next year. Please notice the growth from $780 billion all the way up to basically about a 25% growth within one year. That's insanity. I mean... It's insanity. Over the next decade, the U.S. debt will spend. Well, the U.S. government will spend about seven trillion just to serve the nation's debt. Please understand that They're go we're going to spend seven trillion dollars just to pay the interest on the debt. We cannot pay down the debt. That is the thing that most young people have no comprehension of. It is impossible to pay down the U.S. dollar debt. It is impossible. The only reason that we're allowed to go in debt because we're in a higher level of debt than any civilization. Literally in recorded history since the earth began and and there's been records um and there's only the main reason that we're in that debt is because people still buy our treasury yield they still buy our treasuries for now but and i'm going to talk about that in more detail here in a minute despite the flood of supply treasury yields haven't surged higher because demand hasn't slacked for the world's safest securities there you go which also acts as a global benchmark. Years on the five-year note, a tenor closely in line with the average majority of U.S. debt at 69 months, has risen about 0.4 percentage points since 2007 and was about 2.6% per, uh, on Monday. It's down from a peak of 3.10%. Okay, so these are the, the, the interest rates, and you can see they've been up and down. But the number one reason for this is because despite the flood of supply, meaning Despite all the securities being out there on the marketplace, despite that the U.S. is going to more and more debt, why are people buying our debts? Well, it's because for now, for now, um, it, it's considered the world's safest security. That's crazy if you're thinking about it. If, if, if this doesn't bode huge for Bitcoin long term, 
currently the world's safest security is debt created by the country that has gone in more debt than any other country in civilized recorded history. Think about that. That's the safest place to, for debt right now. So what's happening, as long as the government can continue to sell the treasuries, and they'll be able to do this for a long time, and, and the reason they'll be able to do it is because so much of these treasuries are owned. So let's just pretend that you are the, the sole president, you know, commander-in-chief or whatever of China today. And let's just say a huge percentage of your nation's assets are in these treasury debts from the U.S. government. You want the government to do well enough to keep paying those debts. You want them to continue to be able to pay those debts um, because a, a big part of your nation's security is dependent on it. Your fiscal financial security is dependent upon it. That's where you're storing your money. But at what point do you start getting concerned? Somewhere along the way, you start looking at, hmm, like uh, last year our debt grew higher than our GDP. You start thinking, hmm, their debt is growing faster than their economy. So you got to start taking pause. And arguably, China's already done this. They started encouraging their citizens a couple of years ago to start buying gold. Why? Maybe they're aware of something that our current government isn't talking to our citizens about. You know, maybe they're aware that there could be potential issues. Already, China, and China's not the only one. I talk about it um, in this video a little bit. China, and particularly Russia, and some of the Middle Eastern countries have talked about not no longer using the U.S. dollar as the safe haven, as it was known as a world reserve currency, but creating some sort of dif different international currency. Now, they're not talking about using blockchain yet, but they're talking about getting away from dollar dominance is what they oftentimes refer to it as. So what they're going to try to do is they're, they're, they're talking, one of the ideas floated is let's use several currencies. Let's take the euro, let's take the U.S. dollar, maybe the British pound or maybe the, the you know, whatever, some other, you know, stable currency and, and, and combine, create a basket of currencies. And so they'll, they'll, they won't rely as much on the U.S. dollar. If that starts happening, it becomes difficult. That would probably lower the demand of just the U.S. dollar treasury alone. Um, and, and see, the issue that we're going to have is it's not going to be, it's possible that demand could drop quickly. When people are no longer buying our treasuries, then the question, it's like the bank shuts down. Where do you get the money from when no one is willing to lend you money any longer? That's the challenge. And that, I believe, is why the U.S. dollar ultimately is going to be doomed. Now, the world has a problem because they have financed the U.S. debt for so long. So at some point, you've got to start wondering, hmm, how does this get unraveled? That's why this whole paper money system continues and will continue probably for a while. But at some point... It's got to end. It cannot go on indefinitely. At some point, you start to, to navigate away from the U.S. dollar. And how are you going to navigate away from the U.S. dollar? I believe that every country has devalued their currency and will continue to do so. In, in, in the history of paper money, every government left to their own devices has almost always collapsed their own, own country. Look at Greece in recent times. Look at Venezuela through overprinting their own currency and devaluing it. Um, and I believe that's why ultimately we're going to look at a blockchain currency. I believe that governments ultimately, you know, people say gold and silver. They may look at gold and silver um, possibly. And I do believe in owning a little bit of gold and silver. But ultimately, I believe that they're going to look at blockchain currency. And blockchain cryptocurrency is far superior, in my opinion, to gold and silver and precious metals. And I'm going to be talking about that in an upcoming video. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want to see that video. Thank you so much for watching. This is why I believe in cryptocurrency and this is why I believe in blockchain currency. Ultimately, I think governments are going to have to rely on something that can't be devalued, that the mass population trusts. And people will trust once they understand blockchain and they understand how it's trustless, how it can't be manipulated, and no one can steal your value through inflation or through confiscation. It's very difficult to, to confiscate Bitcoin from someone. I believe that that, that blockchain ultimately will be the, the, the safe haven that people will flock to. But we are so early in this stage. That's why 
it's cryptocurrency is very risky, but it's also why it may potentially be extremely lucrative long term because we are so early in this cryptocurrency revolution. Stay tuned to this channel. I'm going to be talking about cryptocurrencies versus gold and silver, and I'm going to always be following news stories like this. Whenever there's something new out that I believe supports the case that we're moving towards a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency economy long term, then I'm going to always be talking about it on this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. What do you think? Will Bitcoin hit $1 million? Are we going to a cryptocurrency economy? You let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.